If you clicked on this video, you're probably looking for your first diode laser or you're looking to upgrade to a better diode laser. Have I got the machine for you? Today we're gonna be checking out one of the most capable machines I've come across in a while and definitely the safest diode laser machine I've seen to date. What's up guys, I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. And today we are talking about something special. We are checking out probably the only diode laser you're ever gonna need the X-Tool D2. Wait, I'm sorry, the X-Tool S1. Not exactly sure why they didn't call it the D2 considering it, it's kind of the natural evolution of the D1, but we're going with their designation, the S1. Per their usual, everything is packed really nice um, and tight and is kind of really easy to unwrap. So it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of other stuff in the box because I think everything is packed inside the unit. We did get, along with this, we did get the air assist and the honeycomb. This is their first fully enclosed diode laser, which is uh, definitely something that I like to hear because I have my kids out in the shop a lot. It's hard to always have them have their laser goggles on and they tend to be fascinated and just stare at the laser. So it's nice to have something that's more like a CO2 that's fully enclosed that can run and you can look through and see it and do all the things without having to worry about the, the little eyeballs, the little developing eyeballs. Tell you what, they pack these things really well but it also makes it really hard to know if you missed anything. And I have missed pieces in the packing before. So I would say when you unpack these things, make sure you save all the packing until you have the thing fully put together because I've literally left things inside that was kind of hidden under a panel or something in the packing itself. But hey, that might be because I'm just kind of an idiot. Before you get started, you need to take these little brackets off inside here. Um, they're kind of hard to see and uh, I mean there, there's a big note that says you know remove the bracket before you do it but it'd be nice if they made those like yellow or something so you could see them so you knew what you're supposed to remove like I don't even know if you can see that back there it's right here anyway just a thought X tool case in point those the things you're supposed to take off I took off the wrong ones <laughs> so it wouldn't allow the laser to move forward. So even more important that those be labeled somehow other than just like, so this is the one you're supposed to take off. I don't know how well you can see that. And this is the one I took off. It's got a little edge on it, but they're about, they're similar. They have the same screws. They take the same screwdriver, just FYI. Now that I have lights on in here, you want to take this piece off, not this piece. So just be clear, the one that's on the back arm stays on. The one that's on the side piece is what comes off. The back does come with this exhaust fan cover. You can remove this and then go ahead and put on this guy. So if you want to put it to an inline fan or if you want to use the smoke purifier, um, that x -Tool uses, you can connect this up and connect this up to that, which we're gonna do right now. New honeycomb, oh yeah! If you guys don't already have a honeycomb, actually if you do have a honeycomb, I don't think it'll fit, but this is gonna make your life a lot easier. This is definitely an accessory that I say is kind of a must have. You can, you can DIY your way around it, but it's just a nice thing to have in here. Air assist, a lot of people will say you don't need it. I disagree with them. Um, it's gonna give you cleaner cuts. It's gonna it's gonna clear the the soot and whatnot out of your cuts when you're cutting. Um, I mean, I guess you could make an argument that if you were only engraving, you wouldn't need it. Uh, this will work with the old air assist. However, the new air assist is a nice upgrade because it has an auto function to it, which means that you don't have to mess with. This has a, well here. It has a speed control, but it also has an auto function to it to where you can kind of just set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about turning it up or turning it down. Not that I ever really turn it up or turn it down. I usually have it on or off, but nice little unit to have. Um, gives you a little bit more control. And since it has the auto setting to it, you don't have to worry about turning it on and off. The machine should do it for you. These are also slick too. So these are magnetic. They go in and they hold your material down. And then you got your little handle here to pull it up. 
But look at this. So those are pretty solid magnets. It's gonna hold your stuff in place just fine. And your uh, laser head should be able to clear this. Never forget your Peng Shuang. Now let's take a look at the back of this thing. Okay, so you got your power on and off button. You've got your power. You've got your cable that goes to the computer. This guy right here is kind of interesting. This is a key. So if you take this USB out, the machine won't run. So if you want to shut it down, you don't want the kids playing with it, you take that with you. This powers the air assist, and this is the air assist line running in. And then we've got the exhaust headed out down to our uh, X-Tool air smoke purifier. We are fully enclosed, ladies and gentlemen. Laser safe plexi. ASMR, baby. But this is laser safe plexi. This is laser safe for your uh, diode and your IR. There are swappable units. So this is a 40 watt unit. You can swap this out for a 20 watt unit and a two, a two watt IR laser. I don't have any of the other units. I just have the one it came with. Um, so there's that. But these things swap out really easy. You get two screws up here. You just pop those screws out, unplug, good to go. Much easier than the D1 or the D1 Pro. Okay, and this has got to be probably one of the safest machines you're going to find on the market right now when it comes to diode lasers. Um, you've got five point flame detection. So this guy right here, you got one here, you've got one over here. I don't know if you can see that. And you've got one, if I flip you upside down, there's one right over here someplace that I can't see. There it is. Um, as well as the, the laser unit itself. The lid itself is a safety feature. If this is lifted while the laser is running, it will shut off. It has the same tilt and bump protection that all of Exel's other lasers do. And then of course you've got your emergency shutoff on the side, or if you're like most of us laser people, the on off button. <laughs> it's a 40 watt diode laser. That is the same watch you get with the, the basic Glowforge. This is about a $2,200 machine. The basic Glowforge is about a $4,500 machine. Now granted, we're talking CO2 versus diode, and your diode isn't gonna be able to do some, some things, like you're not gonna be able to cut clear acrylic, uh, blue acrylic, um, some lighter, more transparent acrylics. Uh, the, the laser just doesn't see that. But depending on your projects, this is a much more affordable starter unit than any Glowforge on the market now. Plus, you can take this and you can drop it from a 40 watt down to a 20 watt. When you do that, you get a finer laser beam. You can do more detailed projects. You can do all sorts of metals with the two watt IR laser that is an interchangeable unit that you can swap out on this machine. So if you're looking for a CO2 laser, I say you definitely wanna go with the X-Tool P2. Um, it does everything the Glowforge does, plus a bunch of other stuff, and it's about $1,000 cheaper. It's also a 55 watt laser. Now, if you wanna save yourself some bucks and you don't want to lose any speed or power, you can definitely look at the S1. It is a 40 watt laser. Yes, it is a diode. A lot of people only use wood and MDF and things like that with their laser. If you're gonna do that, there's really no reason to have a CO2 laser at this size, I wouldn't say, because I think this is plenty fast. This thing is boasting stable performance at 600 millimeters per second, which is huge, huge dog, that is huge. Um, I don't know when you would actually be able to do that, maybe on some sort of cardstock, maybe. Actually, with the higher power laser, you probably do it on some thinner, thinner materials. But uh, that's, that's insane. 600 millimeters per second is insane for a diode laser. This does not have a camera inside that. You know why that's good? <laughs> because most cameras in most machines use a fish, use a fisheye lens. So what they do is when they take a picture of the material that if you know anything about photography, a fisheye lens rounds out on the corners and distorts. So if you're trying to do something in the middle of the machine, it's pretty spot on. But if you're trying to see something on the outside, you're gonna notice that you're off a little bit. That's the reason that the P2 has the precision camera as well. So it does a big one, but then when you get to where you wanna do your actual work, you use the precision camera. But like your glow forges, the we create, um, all those ones that have just one camera in the middle, you're always gonna have that distortion on the edges. Now what this does instead, which is amazing, is it takes actual measurements. So check this out. Okay, so I have a piece of black acrylic in the machine. What we're gonna do first is we're going to detect how thick it is. We do that by hitting the distance button on here. That guy goes down, checks it out, goes back 
three sets. And now we know how big that is. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to start marking on here, and it's going to ask us to do two vertexes, this vertex and this vertex, and then hit done. The way we do a vertex is we take the X on there. I hope you can see the X, the red X. Take the red X and we go all the way up to one side and we hit the button on the machine. Take it all the way down to the other side. And then we're gonna hit the button on the machine again. Now our two vertex are recorded, we hit done, and it's gonna give us a shape on the machine and you can see where our piece is in the machine. It just gives you better physical recordings of where things are in space inside the unit. You're just not relying so much on any sort of tech that may fail. Xtool is messing around with an AI feature to generate images. I'm using that to generate a skull image for this Example, if you guys want me to go more into the AI, uh, let me know in the comments down below and I can do a separate video on that. This video, I'm just gonna edit the video, I'm just gonna edit this image real quick and then we're gonna send it over to the machine. All right, let's take a look here. Not bad for a quick image. It, uh, it took about 10 minutes to etch that into there and, uh, and cut through it and like your cut is great. This still has the paper on the back of it. Um, with 10 watts, a lot of times you had to increase your power to get through the paper. Uh, it doesn't seem to be an issue with the 40 watt. Looks good. And one of the cool things you can do with the S1 is you can engrave on a curved surface, similar to how you can engrave on a curved surface on the P2. But let me show you how this works. Now I always go out of my way and I measure into the, the piece just a little bit so I can get my ideas for where everything goes. So I just went ahead and lined that up on that, uh, on these two lines. I just went ahead and measured about three quarters of an inch in on both sides and then down a little bit from the top because I know where I want. I know my, I don't, I know I don't want my logo outside of those areas. With it sitting there, I'm going to hit vertex one. It marks it. Marks it twice just for good measure. And then I'm gonna move to my other vertex, which is down here. And I'm not gonna go quite all the way to the bottom, obviously, because we don't want uh, the logo down there either. Vertex two. Next, you come over here, you hit next, and it's gonna ask you if you're gonna start measuring. You said yes. And then it's gonna start just tapping these one by one and getting a map of the curved surface. Now, in the past, what we'd have to do is split the laser focus in between the lower part and the higher part in order to get a decent engraving on a flask like this. So I'm kinda of really curious to see how it's gonna work this way. I went ahead and put these one, three, two, three blocks in there just to make sure that it doesn't uh, shift while the needle is poking on it, and then we just wait for this to uh, do its thing. Okay, and while it's running, uh, just a couple other things that this thing comes with. It does have a conveyor system, but you need to use that with the riser base. It does also have an accessory that is a riser that allows you to use the conveyors with this, so you can do endless projects running through. I, I didn't receive that. My Xtool contact is not a huge fan of mine, so uh, she didn't ship that out to me. But if you wanna do things like that, the, uh, the conveyor does exist. You just need the riser with it. You can order the riser separate or part of a package, I think. If you have the riser, you can also use the rotary device. And then again, having that auto, auto air assist is just, it's just a kind of a bonus feature. It's just one last thing to worry about when you're dealing with this whole system. All in all, I gotta say, I mean, size-wise, it is a little smaller than the D1, but it does do all the things that you would want to do with the D1 or any other diode laser. Pretty snappy machine. I like all the new features. Look forward to uh, working with it some more. All right, guys. 
So I have to say, I, I, I'm pretty impressed with the S1. One thing that, that just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb that I wish they would change is the connection from the machine is USB-C to USB-A. So USB-A to your computers. I don't know about you, but like I have a MacBook. I don't have any USB-A slots anymore. So I have to use a dongle to connect it. Uh, it'd be a little bit more seamless if it was just USB-C to USB-C. I do wish that all the features worked in Lightburn. Uh, that is one of the drawbacks to almost all of uh, Xtool's machines with their cool gadgetry is that it only works in Xtool Creative Space. Xtool Creative Space is a great software as far as third-party softwares go. Uh, I just, am, I, 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 in my blood, I'm a Lightburn guy. But I have to say that XCS is leaps and bounds better than Laserbox Basic. Uh, so they are heading in the right direction as far as software. And that's not going to change. They want you to use their software. But the flask turned out pretty well. So the engraving is crisp. It's clean. It's just a, it's a little smoky on there. Probably need to turn the power up about 5% to get a better image. The acrylic, the acrylic turned out great. You can definitely see the fine details in the engraving. If you're watching this video as it debuts, as it comes out, there is a Black Friday sale going on now at Xtool's website. I will put all those links down below in the description. Black Friday deals are some of the best deals of the year, so I definitely recommend like hitting those up, checking them out. And if you like this video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Uh, like it if that's your thing. Until next time, I gotta take a dip in the trip. Woo!